Hey party people, Techno here, and in this video I've got a little bit more of a tech slash travel tip for you. And this is one that's made a massive difference um, in my personal life, whether it's throwing all my tech gear and going out for a day with my laptop bag or packing for a week or more of extended travel but still carrying all my devices with me and keeping them powered. And all of this revolves around a GAN charger or the GAN charging technology really more in general. So GAN chargers are a fairly new charging technology. They debuted a few years back and you've probably seen these browsing Amazon or shopping for electronics. You might've seen them in a big box store. You might even already own a device that's come with a GAN charger. And even if that's the case, I'm gonna position my argument for why I still think the aftermarket chargers that are out there are worth a look and worth an investment over any OEM based GAN charger that you might get. And in my specific example is gonna be the Apple charger here that we're gonna talk about in a bit. But as for all of this other stuff that's in front of me, well, basically I've been able to consolidate and replace all of this stuff with this one charger and actually more uh, in specific scenarios that I'll be able to replace with this charger moving forward. So the reason for this uh, does lie with the GAN charging technology itself. So what that stands for is gallium nitride. And gallium nitride is the semiconductor material that's used in these GAN chargers that uh, is different from your more traditional chargers that we've had in the past, which primarily use silicon as the semiconductor. Gallium nitride is a much more efficient semiconductor, therefore it loses less energy to heat. And among other things, um, that makes it a much more efficient charging solution versus silicon at the same or higher power output. So you reduce the size and the weight uh, because of that lower thermal output you can reduce the size of these. The cost of manufacturing actually goes down because now the components inside of here don't have to deal with the higher heat output associated with pushing silicon to those higher charging uh, capacities. And you end up with a very small, flexible, and efficient charging solution. So in this case, I have an Anchor PowerPort 3. This is a two port, 100 watt charger. There are multiple variations to these GAN chargers. I'm not advocating for any specific GAN charger. This one works in my scenario, but there are tons of these out there that come in all kinds of configurations. So there might be one that works in your particular scenario better than this one, but I'm going to explain why this one works very well for me. So again, I was able to consolidate and replace all of this stuff, which it's not necessarily fair to say that I've traveled with all of this stuff at the same time. Usually I'll kick the wallboard for the mobile devices out, but I wanted to bring this in to note that you can replace this easily with this and so much more and get the benefits, primarily this is this is one of the things, get the benefits of rapid charging for all of your mobile devices, your laptops, your tablets, everything that supports rapid charging. Versus one thing that I've done in the past is uh, utilize those USB-A ports that might be on the lamp or who knows what else in my hotel room. But the thing is, those are limited to very low uh, power outputs. Uh, if memory serves, USB-A is what, five volts at one amp, so five watts of charging. It might be slightly higher than that, depending on what the uh, the configuration is. And so I might be generalizing there, but suffice it to say, it's a, it's a slog to charge modern devices that have high capacity batteries off of one of those old school uh, USB-A ports. Here you get the advantages of rapid charging, and you also get, again, that reduced size and bulk. So we get rid of our wall board, now, in the worst case scenario, if you're in the PC world, it's probably you're probably no stranger to a bulky charger like this and all of the cabling that comes with it. So this goes to an HP Spectre. This is a 90 watt charger. Now, one caveat here about why this works so well for my particular situation is many of my devices utilize USB-C for charging, including the Spectre laptop. If you have a proprietary charger on your laptop, then this might not be as advantageous in your scenario. But because my laptop uses USB-C and most of the other devices that I travel with do as well, this works out beautifully. Thankfully, we are finally living in a world where USB-C is becoming the standardized charging port for so many devices. Even Apple's had to admit that USB-C is better for consumers than proprietary chargers that they've utilized in the past. Uh, so having these USB-C ports on here, again, works beautifully. Now, there still are plenty of devices um, out there and I own many of them, or well, I own some of them. I don't know how many there are, I suppose, uh, that use still micro USB um, or, you know, God forbid, mini USB, but that's still lurking around. 
Uh, but if you do have those kind of th those kind of situations, you may want to look into a charger that accommodates a USB-A port. For me, that's not as big of a deal because going back to those ports that are in that hotel room, I'll just use those for charging those micro USB devices. Uh, they're not high. They're not uh, you know rapid charging devices, so the additional power output's not really an advantage there. Or barring that, I'll just plug them into my laptop and use my laptop for a charging hub that, for anything that this can't directly accommodate. So that's one thing to kind of consider there. What charging ports are on your devices and what configuration of these chargers do you really need? Because of course, if you don't need 100 watts for your general travel, you can go with a lower wattage charger and it's gonna be even smaller and lighter than this. Almost down to the size where you're gonna be dealing with something more like this. So in this case, get rid of the wall board, get rid of this massive charging brick. Let's take a look at some of the size and weight savings that are associated there. So throwing all of this, on the scale, we're coming in at 15.3 ounces in freedom units, so almost a pound. Now, if you compare that to the anchor charger, we have 7.3 ounces, literally half the weight. Uh, so that's a huge savings in weight alone, but then also it's, you know, you don't really need to look at it too closely to see that in terms of size and bulk, this is a massive win. So this frees up space in my bag. I can either carry more stuff or I can just lighten my load in general. I can totally replace this as well for my charging needs. Now the Apple charger is kind of an interesting situation because your older Apple chargers, of course, are gonna be silicon based. So you're gonna have all of the associated advantages, although Apple has historically had much smaller, more compact charging solutions than we've seen in the PC world. Um, but this is one of the newer chargers. This comes with the MacBook Pro and this is also a GAN charger. So despite the fact that it's larger, and it is heavier, what this is doing is giving me 140 watts of output versus the 100 watts here. So this is less, this is more of an apples to apples comparison where you're gonna be seeing a more powerful charger is gonna be slightly larger and heavier as to be expected than a slightly less powerful charger that is smaller and lighter. Now this has the additional uh, advantage again of multi-port charging, so multiple interfaces that we can charge from and multiple device charging, which the Apple charger does not. So despite the high power output, this only has one USB-C port. This does work fine in charging my mobile devices that I've tested. However, one thing that uh, even this would be a win over this power brick, right? I mean, this is still substantially smaller, but this charger simply does not get along with charging this laptop. I'm not really sure what the reasons are, Obviously, this is more than powerful enough to charge this laptop. That might actually be part of the issue. It might be too much power. I'm not really sure how they implement the charging in these. Uh, but in any case, while this does work for charging my MacBook Pro, and of course, it's going to charge that device faster because it can take full advantage of the full power output at 140 watts. You can charge your mobile devices from here. So this is this is still a good OEM charger, but I honestly, I think this is better, even though it's slightly less powerful. I have never... So far in the months that I've been using this, I have not been in a situation where I've missed the additional power output. This charges my MacBook Pro just fine. It's not gonna charge it as fast. That's just reality, that's just math. But still, the 100 watt output here has been more than adequate for keeping my MacBook Pro charged. And again, I'm reducing that size in bulk and I can charge multiple devices at the same time. Now, speaking of that multi-device charging here, I do want to point out, again, one of the caveats or the things you should be aware of here. This is again, 100 watt total output charger. We have multiple ports here. So we have a laptop designated port. If I wanna charge my laptop at 100 watts, plug it in, good to go. The moment you start charging a second device though, you are going to split the power output of this between those two devices. And I don't remember the exact ratio for this particular charger, but let's just say it's on the order of 60 to 40. That would mean that if I'm charging two devices, I'm gonna have 60 watts at this port, 40 potentially. 40 watts at this port. So if I'm charging my laptop, that might no longer be sufficient to charge it, um, or at the very least, it's gonna drastically uh, lengthen the time that it takes to charge because of the reduced power output. That being said though, you still have the advantage of multi-device charging. So if you're charging your tablet, your camera, your phone, your watch, your, who knows, power, and charging your Flipper Zero while you're running a Raspberry Pi, in all of those cases, you have the capability to do so with one charger and still get the effect of rapid charging for both of those devices as you're doing it. Granted, the Flipper Zero doesn't use rapid charging to my knowledge, but yeah, 
that's that's kind of a point aside. Multi-device charging here in a very small and lightweight package is pretty much the reason that this has made a massive difference for me. And I'm also a one bag traveler, so that's also an important consideration. I hate checking a bag. I hate going to baggage claim. Unless I'm doing something that absolutely necessitates me checking a bag, I'm gonna avoid it at all costs. So that makes the size and weight savings here and the flexibility of this charger all the more appreciated. Now, a couple other devices in special situations that I expect to be able to replace uh, using this solution are gonna be things like travel adapters. So, of course, if you are traveling abroad, you will more than likely need an adapter to convert your type A or B plug into whatever the location that you're going to uses. For me, that's most frequently seems to be a type C plug. Now in the past, especially when I'm carrying this thing around, since this has a grounding plug, I have little other choice than to use a charger like this. And while this isn't heavy, it is bulky. And it still had its advantages back in the day because I do have my USB A ports here that I could charge devices off of, but as devices evolve, as the higher capacity batteries come out, this is really showing its age in terms of what it can uh, reasonably achieve. Again, low, low power output here on these ports. So at the end of the day, this effectively becomes a converter between these plug types. Now, I can use something like this when I'm traveling abroad, uh, whatever is region specific, but here we have, again have a type C plug. So this is the one that I'm most commonly going to use. And by utilizing this, I still keep a very small, lightweight package um, that is going to allow me to charge multiple devices. So again, reducing size and bulk and really gaining more efficiency out of it at the end of the day. Now, in all fairness, this would work equally as well for the Apple charger, right? And the Apple charger does even allow for you to swap out these charging plugs on the back. And I'm not sure what the available options are, but that's totally something you can do. Uh, however, as I mentioned, I seem to most often be using these type C plugs in my travels. And if you've ever used these, uh, and plugged the, plugged anything that uses this into the socket that, it, uh, a tr like a travel adapter into one of those sockets that will accommodate this type C plug, you'll know that they don't necessarily want to stay situated and seated all of the time. So I can't say for sure at this point in time that the size and weight of this device is gonna be low enough to um, help keep this firmly in place whenever it's plugged in. Only time will tell that. Uh, but I can definitely say that it has a better chance of achieving that than this charger does because again, this is coming in at 10 ounces. I don't know if we actually threw this on the scale or not, but just so you can see if I did forget to do this already. The Apple charger comes in at just about 10 ounces versus again, the 7.3 of the anchor charger. So still uh, some weight savings there and some size savings. Um, but I think I've beaten this horse enough. Uh, so this is kind of what I wanted to share with everybody. This might make sense for you to implement in your own kind of travel plans, your tech gear sort of loadout, if you will. Um, but with all of that being said, thank you very much for watching guys. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, take care and I will catch you later.